the BPC, oh, I don't know why more people are not actually interested in BPC because it's incredible. Like with some of those studies out of like, you know, Western Europe, they have some super interesting stuff and every single one that I've read, it's like, oh, it helps with this. Oh, it helps with this. Well, let's test it on this. Oh, it helps with this. So this, if they did eye drops in the cornea of rats and they did a lesion on the eye and they put it in an eyedropper and it's like within 24 hours, you see some type of whatever response you're looking for and it's increasing. So it's yeah, it's super interesting. You know. Yeah, I think the biggest problem is that it's lacking human studies. So while the uh, BPC-157 is naturally made in us and uh, for the most part, the it is generally regarded as safe or GRAS. And there are groups out there who have applied to the FDA for BPC-157 to have that status, which just means that you can use it. It doesn't have to go through clinical trials, but it is generally regarded as safe, but it doesn't have that exact designation. But there's, because of that, there has been a lack of funding for research, a lack of that human research that then gives other physicians more comfort in saying, okay, I can take this thing that I've never heard of that some group of researchers in Croatia discovered, which already starts to sound sketchy, right? And start to use this in patients, not getting to the discussion on, you know, there's no pharmaceutical version. So anytime you have that, there's no, people aren't going to be putting millions of dollars behind research into something that, you know, is just going to be a supplement. And so there's a lot of nuances to that. And that is one of the things that I wish is I wish there was more human research on BPC-157 because I do think it's a really, really powerful compound that could help a lot of people.